In Formula 1, nothing is certain, and some things never happen altogether. This is F1's biggest what-ifs. What if Bertrand Gasho was never arrested? Bertrand Gasho was a Jordan driver, and in late 1990, he was due to meet team members and representatives of the team sponsors. He got into an altercation with a taxi driver on his way and sprayed the taxi driver with CS gas. He was later arrested and charged with actual bodily harm and possession of a prohibited weapon. His trial was set for one week before the 1991 Belgian Grand Prix. He was expecting to receive a fine or a suspended sentence, but Gasho was sentenced to 18 months in prison. Jordan was now left with only one driver, so they replaced him for the Belgian Grand Prix with a little known sports car driver called Michael Schumacher. He qualified 7th and 7 tenths in front of his teammate. In the race, however, he retired with a gearbox issue on the first lap of the race, but this performance in qualifying was enough for Benetton to offer him a permanent drive for the rest of the season, and the rest is history. But if Gasho hadn't attacked the taxi driver, would Schumacher have ever made it into Formula 1? Well, Schumacher's sports car team, Sauber, joined Formula 1 in 1993, so he possibly could have driven for them. He had obvious talent, but by 1993 he had already won a race in Formula 1, and Sauber's car wasn't as competitive as the Benetton that he was driving, especially in 1994 when he won his first World Championship. So, would he have moved to a big team after Sauber? Could he have turned Sauber into championship winners like he did with Benetton? He probably wouldn't have won the 1994 World Championship. Would he have seven World Championships? I think probably not, but he would have made it to Formula 1 eventually and his obvious talent would probably have made him a world champion anyway. What if Lewis Hamilton joined Red Bull in 2013 instead of Mercedes? By the end of his time at McLaren, Lewis Hamilton was becoming frustrated with the team and this ultimately led to him joining Mercedes in 2013. According to multiple sources, he also met with Red Bull multiple times before leaving McLaren. So what if he joined Red Bull instead of Mercedes in 2013? Hamilton would have been paired with Sebastian Vettel at Red Bull, with Mark Webber retiring a year earlier to give way to Lewis Hamilton. Sebastian Vettel and Red Bull dominated the 2013 season in real life, so it would have been a shootout for the championship between Vettel and Hamilton. Would Vettel have won his fourth title, or would Hamilton have won his second? Either way, we would have had an amazing championship battle throughout the season. In 2014, surely Nico Rosberg could be the world champion as Red Bull struggled. After that, would Lewis Hamilton stay at Red Bull? He may have moved to Mercedes in 2015 and won the championship then. He would have lost the 2014 championship that he won in real life, but maybe he would have won the 2013 championship instead at Red Bull. And what would this have meant for Daniel Ricciardo? who moved up to Red Bull in 2014 in real life and impressed very much, beating Sebastian Vettel comfortably. We will never find out, but what a 2013 season we would have had with Vettel and Hamilton both battling for the championship in that Red Bull car. What if Michael Schumacher didn't break his leg at Silverstone in 1999? At the British Grand Prix in 1999, Michael Schumacher suffered a brake failure and broke his leg he missed six races and his chance of championship glory in 1999 was gone. Mika Hakkinen won the championship in real life, two points ahead of Ferrari's Eddie Irvine. Schumacher is obviously better than Irvine, so it is logical to suggest that he would have won the 1999 World Championship. However, Mika Hakkinen made a lot of mistakes in 1999 towards the end of the season, and with pressure from Michael Schumacher behind instead of Irvine, would he have concentrated more and made less mistakes? Or would he have made even more mistakes because of immense pressure from Michael Schumacher? I guess we will never find out, but I think Michael Schumacher would have won the 1999 World Championship fairly comfortably had he not broken his leg. Does this mean he will be an 8 time World Champion and have won 6 championships in a row between 1999 and 2004? Or would he have been burned out after not getting the break in 1999 that he had in real life? Personally, I think he would have retired after the 2002 season. He would have won six championships by then, 
and at that time would be the most successful driver ever in Formula 1, beating Fangio's five world titles won. This would have given others, like Coulthard, Raikkonen and Montoya, a chance to win other championships, with Michael Schumacher out of the way, and maybe even Rubens Barrichello in that Ferrari that was so dominant in some of those years. What if Robert Kubica didn't have his horrendous rallying crash at the start of 2011? Between 2006 and 2010, Robert Kubica was one of the most promising young drivers in Formula 1, achieving one win and 12 podiums for Saiba and Renault. In February 2011, he crashed whilst rallying, and this crash was so severe that he had to have part of his arm amputated. This left him unable to compete in F1 for many years until his sensational return in 2019 with Williams, although he would never be quite the same driver again. But what if he never had that crash? He had already signed for Ferrari for the 2012 season and he would have likely had a great season for Renault in 2011 before joining the Italian team. 2012 would have been his first year in a championship battle with Fernando Alonso as his teammate. I believe he would have performed better than Massa did in real life, but not as well as Alonso. Does this mean that he would have taken more points off Alonso and Vettel would have won more comfortably? Or would he have been able to take points off Vettel but give up points to Alonso through team orders, which famously were employed by Ferrari at the time? I think it's more likely that he would have taken points off Alonso and he would have still lost the championship to Vettel in 2012. 2013 was an uncompetitive year for Ferrari comparatively and after that who knows what could have happened to Robert Kubica if only we knew. I personally think he would have had a lot more wins and podiums than he did in real life but only one win and 12 podiums and I believe he could have battled for a championship but I don't think with Alonso as his teammate he quite would have won it and of course with Vettel joining Ferrari in 2015 in real life he would have had another battle with his teammate to contend with if he had another championship winning car in 2017 and 18. We can't know what would have happened to Robert Kubica if he hadn't had that crash, but we do know that he would have won many more races and got many more podiums in that Ferrari in 2012 and 2013 and beyond. What if Michael Schumacher stayed at Mercedes for 2013 and 2014? Michael Schumacher came out of retirement to join a new Mercedes team for 2010. He stayed for three seasons before retiring at the end of 2012. He only achieved one podium with no wins for Mercedes, but after he left, the Mercedes car became much better. Mercedes won three races in 2013 before dominating in 2014 and winning both championships. But what if Schumacher stayed at Mercedes for 2013 and 14? Would he have won more races, possibly even another championship? The first question to answer is who would have been his teammate? Nico Rosberg or Lewis Hamilton? Either way, I think he would have been beaten to the 2014 championship by his teammate, whether it was Rosberg or Hamilton, as they are both performing at a higher level than him at the end of his career. Having said this, I think he would have won a few races in 2014 and maybe even in 2013, and perhaps he would have reached 100 race wins in his career. What do you think would have happened? Let me know in the comments and thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.